North Korea to dismantle nuclear test site ahead of U.S. summit. Uh, of course, referring to the scheduled June 12th meeting uh, in Singapore between North Korean leader Kim Jong-un and U.S. President Donald J. Trump uh, following, as we've seen in recent weeks, uh, historic meetings between South Korean President Moon Jae-in uh, and the North Korean President Kim Jong-un as they have agreed in principle to end uh, the more than half centuries long Korean War on the Korean Peninsula. But one thing I have noted about this dismantling of this nuclear test site uh, which is coming, which journalists have been invited to from May 25th, May 23rd to May 25th uh, in North Korea is that this uh, nuclear site has already uh, been collapsed which is why if you read this article it says when shortly after the collapse of North Korea's nuclear test site which effectively precluded Pyongyang from nuclear research and development for the foreseeable future Kim referring to uh, President Kim Jong-un voluntarily agreed to halt the country's nuclear program and leverage what was basically an earthquake into a historic diplomatic accord and political detente with the U.S. and President Trump uh, and it says as a reminder on April 21st Kim Jong-un said the site Pongri Ri built in the secluded mountain valley northeast of Pyongyang and the site for all six of the regime nuclear bass would be would be shuttered and further tests had been suspended and uh, it goes on to further to say it remains unclear if Trump has been made aware that Kim Jong-un is only engaging the US in a denuclearization effort not because he wanted to because he had no other choice but one thing absent from all this Korea denuclearization talk and peace between the North and the South is that no one uh, in the mainstream media is mentioning the fact that North Korea currently has two satellites uh, orbiting the Earth and that orbits the United States uh, every one hour and 34 minutes called the Kwon Myung Song 4 which is Korean for bright star as we say in layman terms, shining star. And it was launched on uh, February the 7th, uh, 2016. And the reactions at the time were condemnation. As you can see here, it says the launch was strongly condemned by the U.S. Security, by the U.N. Security Council. It prompted South Korea and the United States to announce they would explore the possibility of deploying thermal high altitude area defense that an advanced missile defense system in South Korea, which is strongly opposed by China and Russia. This Reuters article from February the 6th, 2016, of course it was already uh, February the 7th in Korea at, at the time of the publishing of this article. You'll see this is what prompted uh, the initial deployment of the FAD missiles to the Korean Peninsula. It said South Korea and the United States said that if the advanced missile system called Terminal High Altitude Area Defense Staff was deployed to South Korea, it would be focused only on North Korea. So had been reluctant, Seoul being the government of South Korea, had been reluctant to discuss openly the possibility of deploying that South Korean President Park Goon Hee turned Sunday's lunch an unforgivable, unforgivable act of provocation. So that's what initially gave us the impetus to put out that missile systems on the Korean Peninsula was to launch these satellites. Of course, if you go back to CBS News for uh, February 8, 2016, with the article that said North Korea's new satellite flew over Super Bowl site, referring to Super Bowl 50, uh, played at Levi Stadium out in Santa Clara. California, which is in the suburbs of San Francisco, out in Silicon Valley. An article starts, here's a bit of Super Bowl trivia. North Korea's newest missile passed almost right over the stadium just an hour after it ended. And it goes on to say, both of the Kwame Song or Shining Star satellites complete their orbits in about 94 minutes. And based on data released by international organizations tracking them, the new one passed almost right over Levi Stadium about an hour after the Super Bowl ended and the article concludes with a quote from a gentleman 
it says I have no idea when the end of the Super Bowl was not a sports fan he said what well, Quam McSong 4 did pass over that part of California 8:27 p.m. Pacific Standard Time at an altitude of 480 kilometers I calculate it was 35 miles west and 300 miles up as it passed overhead heading almost due north and it also goes on the state you can track uh, the movements of these satellites on n2yo.com and I'll leave a link to that website in the description section of this video and all this is important because if you go back to the initial reactions to this you'll see that Dr. Peter Vincent Spry who I'll explain who he is in just a second was quoted as saying the EMP Commission, which is the Electromagnetic Post Commission, has officially been warning about those satellites, especially now that the intelligence community admits that North Korea can miniaturize warheads. Price stated, our argument all along has been that they could make weapons small enough to put on those satellites that pass over the United States on the optimum trajectory for an EMP attack on North America. And then who exactly is uh, Dr. Peter Vincent Spry? Dr. Peter Vincent Spry is the executive director of the EMP Task Force on National and Homeland Security, a congressional advisory board dedicated to achieving protection of the United States from electromagnetic posts, cyber attack, mass destruction, terrorism, and other threats to civilian critical infrastructure on an accelerated Basis. And then we also have an article published uh, May 10, 2017, which is titled North Korea may be planning satellite e EMP attack. And in the article, it's a very short article, uh, it states, was well, quoting Dr. Uh, Peter Vincent Spry again. Uh, he says, There have been many reports lately on the damage. An electromagnetic post attack would inflict on the United States, the homeland, and of course, an electromagnetic post attack, all electronic capability would be instantly destroyed. This would mean no food production, no computers, no water, no in, no no energy. Millions of Americans would starve. Uh, and it goes on to say that North Korea is pra is practicing the cyber age version of battleship diplomacy, so they can always have one of their satellites very close to being over the United States said Dr. Spry and it goes on to say detonating a high altitude nuclear post in the United States would be devastating it goes on to say the Hermit Kingdom referring to North Korea launched two satellites in 2012 and 2014 that overfly the United States every 94 minutes and another article uh, Dr. Spry is also quoted in the interview he did with Breitbart News Radio in which he says we should not be tolerating the North Korean satellites that are orbiting over our country. There are two of them and the intelligence community is still silent about that. He said of the Kwame Song 3-2 and the Kwame Song S-4 Earth observation satellites launched in April 2012 and February 2016. And Dr. Spry goes on to say the EMP Commission which is the Electromagnetic Post Commission has officially been warning about those satellites especially now that the intelligence community admits that North Korea can miniaturize warheads and he goes on further to say our arguments all along has been that they could make weapons small enough to put those satellites that pass o over the United States on the optimum trajectory for an EMP attack on North America and actually all of this reminds me of the 2006 post-apocalyptic CBS TV show uh, known as Jericho and if you go to season 1 uh, episode 6902 it actually depicts uh, this uh, electromagnetic post hitting the United States hitting the town of Jericho as well as most major US cities to include uh, San Diego uh, Los Angeles, New York City Detroit uh, Atlanta uh, with an electromagnetic post, a bomb that knocks all of the power out across the United States. It's probably predictive programming because we know a lot of times these producers go and talk to the CIA and the CIA and the FBI tell them which storylines to input uh, in their TV shows. Interestingly enough, 
uh, this episode that depicts this electromagnetic pulse uh, attack is titled 902 because it happens at 902 p.m. and of course 902 or well, 9 plus 2 is 11 9 11 interesting uh, choice of episode titles for the show I know it can be very disconcerting uh, to know that North Korea literally has what are probably two nuclear capable uh, satellites in outer space uh, orbiting the, the world every one hour and 34 minutes that goes directly over the United States of America so we just have to watch uh, this closely all of these peace talks uh, of course I don't have all the answers nobody has all the answers uh, and I'll leave the links to all these stories uh, in the description of this video and don't forget to like subscribe share and comment John Philippe sign off